Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off the gas valve at the wall. In this video we're going to show you how to change out the GE dryer drum support shaft and bearing. It's going to be a very easy repair and it's only going to take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get out AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new drum support shaft and bearing. The drum support shaft and bearing is what supports the rear of the drum, and it's also what it rides on. The main reason you'd be changing it out is if the bearing's gone bad and the shaft is damaged, and you'd rather change out the whole assembly than the individual pieces. In order to change the part, we have to take the dryer apart. First thing we're going to do is open up the door. Once you have the door open, we're going to remove these two screws that hold the top on. We're going to use a Phillips screwdriver to take them out. Once you have them out, we're going to close the door and go around back. Now we're going to use the corner-inch nut driver to take out the screws that hold the access panel on. Then we can lift the panel up, take it off, and we're going to Use a small flathead screwdriver to help take the ground wire off if it's tight. Once you have it off, you can set the panel aside. Now that we have the back panel off, we have access to the control board. There's a lot of wires in here, so if you need to, take a picture of it so you remember where they go. They're all held on by locking tabs, so we're going to reach in and press the locking tabs and pull them off. Now that we have all the wires off the controls, we have to take the ethernet plug off. There's a little locking tab on this side. So we're just going to take a small flathead screwdriver and press in and then press on it. And then just let it go. Once you have the ethernet plug out, we're going to use the quarter inch nut driver to take out the long screws that hold on the control panel. Once you have the screws out, there's just a bunch of tabs around the control panel that hold it in. So we're just going to pull back to release them, and you can lift it off and set it aside. Now we have to get the wires down through the top of the dryer. They have these little covers on each side, so we're going to use the corner nut driver to take out the screws that hold them in. Once you have the screw out, you can just lift up on the cover and pull it out and set it aside. And we're going to take the wires out of the little holder right here. Just need to unclip it. And then carefully feed the wires down through the hole so we can take the top off. Once you have this side down, we can do the other side. Then we're going to use the Phillips screwdriver to remove the screw on each side that holds the top to the cabinet. There's some tabs in the front, so we're just going to lift up on a little bit. And then there's part of the top goes underneath the lip on the cabinet. So we're going to lift up on it and then push it back and then lift it off and set it aside. Now that we have the top off, we're going to disconnect the wiring harness for the light. There's a locking tab on there. You just want to press and separate it. Then we can use the quarter inch nut driver to take out these two screws to hold the front panel on. Once you have them out, we can pull the panel off. Don't pull the panel off all the way. We still have to reach down and disconnect the wiring harnesses. We're just going to drop the panel down far enough to see the wiring harnesses. There's the connector here for the moisture sensors. It's got a locking tab on the top. I'm just going to press and release the two. Then we have to move this little protector out of the way. Just going to pull it out of the tab right there. So we can disconnect the 
door switch wiring harness. Same thing, there's a little tab on the top. I'm just going to press on it and pull the wire harness off. After you popped it off, you can let go of the cover. Then we can lift the front panel off. There's three little mounting tabs down there that it's mounted on. So we're just going to carefully lift it off and set it aside. Now we have to take the drum out. So we're going to reach in and take the belt off of the idler. You're going to grab the idler pulley with your right hand and pull it down towards the base of the machine. And then unhook the belt from the motor pulley. Once you have it off, we can lift the drum out. To pull the drum out, we're just going to lift up on the belt and the front of the drum and guide it out through the cutouts. Now that we have the drum out of the dryer, we put it on some boxes so the support shaft wouldn't stick into the ground. We're just going to reach in and use the Torque 20 driver to take out the three screws that hold it on. Once you have the screws out, the drum support shaft and bearing is just going to fall out. So you just have to reach underneath, and grab it, and pull it out. Here's the old drum support shaft and bearing next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. Before we put the new assembly in, we're going to use one of the screws to cut the threads. These aren't tapped from the manufacturer, so it's going to be easier to do this now than when you're trying to put it into the drum. So we're just going to get it started and take the Torque 20 driver and drive it through each one. You want to make sure you're driving it this way. so. It's the same as when you're going to mount it to the drum. Once you have the threads in there, we can put it on the drum. To put the new part back in, first thing we're going to do is look down here and make sure these holes are lined up with the holes underneath. If this diffuser moved at all, you're going to have to make sure everything's lined up. And because it's such a long drum, it's going to be hard to reach down in here and tighten up these screws while we put the shaft on, on the back. So we're going to put these screws through to hold the diffuser on. Then we're going to put the drum on its side. Then we're going to take the shaft and bearing, and just kind of set it onto the screws, get them lined up as much as you can. And then we're going to take a piece of tape and hold it in place. You want to try to use something that doesn't have a lot of residue so you don't leave uh, glue on the drum. You don't want to press very hard on the shaft because you don't want to push the screws back in. So you just want to carefully hold the shaft in place with just enough tension so it doesn't fall off when we put the drum back on the end. Once you have the drum back on the end, we can reach in with the Torque 20 driver and tighten down the screws. Just want to carefully push down and get them started. Make sure they all start. Once you have them started, you can just tighten them all down. Once you have them tightened down, we can put the drum back on its side. Take the tape off. And just make sure you look at all the screws and make sure they're all tightened down so you don't have any spaces behind each one. Now we can put the drum back in the dryer. We're just going to put the belt on it. And you're going to have to tilt the drum back a little bit to get the belt around it. And you want to make sure the belt is in this indent, the rear one. Once you have it in place, we're going to lift it up and turn it around and feed it back through the little cutouts in the cabinet. And then we're going to make sure the shaft 
goes into the little receptor in the back. Once you have the drum in, you want to make sure the belt is in the rear recess here, and you want to make sure that the grooves are towards the drum. Now that we have the drum in, we're going to reach in and put the belt on. Just want to reach in and pull the idler pulley down to the floor, and then hook the belt over the motor pulley, and then make sure it goes over the top of the idler pulley. Once you have it on, we can put the front panel back on. To put the front panel on, I'm just going to lift it into place and set it onto the three mounting tabs. Once you have it in place, we can lift it up a little bit so we can attach the door switch and moisture sensor wiring harnesses. To attach those, we're just going to move the cover out of the way and reach in and grab the wiring harnesses. You got the pink and gray that goes to the moisture sensor. Just have to lock it together. Then we have the door switch wiring harness. Just plugs right into the door switch. Just want to plug it on so you get a good connection. Then we're going to swing the cover back in place. Just want to make sure the little tab goes into the front panel. Once you have that on, we can lift the panel up and put it in place. As you're lifting it up, we have to lift up on the drum and set it onto the glides. And then as you get closer, you have to make sure that these tabs go into the slots on the cabinet in the front of the panel. Once you have the panel in place, we can use the Cornish nut driver to put in the screws to hold it on. Once you have those in, we can reconnect the drum light over on the left-hand side. Just have to connect them together so you get a good connection. Once you have it on, we can put the top back on. You want to make sure that the lip of the top goes underneath the panel here so it locks it in place. And as you lower it down, you want to make sure that these tabs go into the top so it's lined up properly. And slide it forward. Once you have it in place, we're just going to pull the wires out. Make sure they don't get pinched in between the top and the cabinet when we're putting it on. Once you have the wires out, we're going to come to the front and open up the door. Then we can use the Phillips screwdriver to put in the screws to hold the top to the cabinet. You might have to pull the top forward a little bit to get the holes to line up. Once you have the screws in, we can close the door. Now we can put the screws on in the back. We're just going to line them up and put them in. And you can use the Phillips screwdriver to tighten them down. Now we can put the covers on and route the wires. We're just going to put the feet down into the openings. And then we can use the quarter inch nut driver to put the screw in. Then we can grab the wire and run it through the holder, lock it in place. Once you have this one done, you can do the other side. To put the control panel in, you have to make sure all these tabs and openings line up around it and then push it forward to lock it in place. Once you have those on, we can use the corner nut driver to put in the screws to hold it down. Now we can reconnect all the wires. First thing we're going to do is Reconnect the Ethernet wire. There's a little tab down here at the bottom that you have to line up. 
and you're going to push this side in first so it hooks over here and then snap the other side in. Now we can attach the rest of the wires to the control board. We're just going to follow the ethernet cable up to this one. It goes right up here on the board. Just want to make sure these click in and get good connection on them all. The next one is the pink, gray, and green. It's going to go right up here. Then we have this one that goes on the other end of the board. It's the white, black, and yellow. And then we have the relay wires, which, remember there was the relay with the blue wire and the relay with the purple wire that matched the stickers. Then we can grab the red and black wire from the other end. It plugs right up here in the control board. Once you have all the wires on, we can put the access panel back on. To put it on, we just want to grab the ground wire and push it onto the ground terminal. Once you have the wire in, we're going to lift up the access panel so the little feet go into the holders. And let it drop down into place. Then we're going to use the quarter inch nut driver to put in the screws. Now that we have the driver put back together, you can plug it in, turn the gas back on, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.